Hold on. Hey, everybody. It's Sha Black. I am here on with Brad Luscom from Diamonds and Dinosaurs. Um, I just wanted to take an opportunity to share with you. Uh, Brad is one of our really long-term vendors with Southeast Pacific Pride, as well as a variety of other events that he and his lovely wife, Karen, join us for. Um, and he is an amazing purveyor of all types of crystals and gemstones. So on the shared screen here, you can see Brad and Karen Luscombe in one of their setups. Um, I'm not sure where this was. So Brad, tell me about this picture of you with the crystal grid on your shirt. Uh, that was at a small uh, combination uh, healer and massage studio in uh, in uh, Natick, excuse me, uh, that we did a show every six months or so we do there. Of course, not at the moment. Uh, a fun local event, one of the typical ones we do. We enjoy it a lot. Nice. Yeah, so, at, uh, a Healing Place is the name of it with Angela. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I've been by her place. Because, you know, I work up in Framingham. Although, not right now. I'm working, I'm working from home. <laughs> yes. And I love it. As we all are doing, yes. Right? I'm, I'm totally yep. spoiled. I don't know that I ever want to go back to working, not from home. But anyway, yeah. um, let me hide my self view. I don't think people need to see my picture when you and Karen look so amazing. So how, is, how has um, the pandemic been affecting you? Well, we were pretty normal till uh, early February when I came back from the Big Gem show. Uh, things were fine with that. And a lot of interesting and new materials. A little different because of the lack of certain people who decided not to come to the U.S. from overseas. Mm -hmm. But still some great pieces that we were able to collect. And uh, after that, uh, we did one more show out at Robin's Nest in March. And uh, from then on, it's just been individual customers calling and looking to see what we have for items and shipping them out from here that way. Oh, that's good. You've had, you've had good customers calling and, and you've been getting some stuff shipped out. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate it. Uh, and we've had a few referrals from other people who said they didn't need anything, but they had friends who uh, were looking for stuff and gave us the hit, the nod on helping them. And uh, it's worked out great so far. Nice. Well, you know, you're always my go-to when people are looking for different stones. I say, you got to call Brad. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah. speaking of calling Brad, why don't you tell our listeners slash, slash watchers how they can get a hold of you um, to order crystals and gemstones? Well, the easiest way would be to email us at diamonds. And that's spelled out A N D dinosaurs at msn.com. And we can communicate uh, all day that way. And we can forward you photographs of the items we're talking about and uh, make connections that way. You can also get a little taste of it from the, our Facebook page, also Diamonds and Dinosaurs. But I really don't do business directly through there. And I do prefer to be messaged as opposed to. Uh, open sourced on the uh, regular Facebook page. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'll make sure I include uh, a picture of your business card. We do have one nestled in with one of your pictures coming up, but I'll, I'll add another picture of just your business card and a link to your Facebook page. Um, uh, that'd be great. Thank you. On our, our YouTube page. So just so you know, this is going to be on the South Mass Pagan Pride YouTube channel and um, the new website for Pagan Pride. Cool. So I'm going to the next slide here. And the next image we have are your tumbled Priscilla blue stones. You want to uh, yes. talk about those? That was one of my favorite finds from going to the Big Gem Show in February. Uh, typically, it's not available. And when you do get it, it's craziness. Uh, but I did find a gentleman from Wales, England, where the general area of uh, the blue stone is found. And he had it pre-shaped into uh, some beautiful palm stones and some very fancier pieces with like uh, moon phase, uh, excuse me, 
a um, a moon face type of carving on it. I would say it's more looks look more like a green man to me. Really? But they were very nice. I have and, the uh, palm stone up right now. Yes, uh, and it's it's a very unusual stone, the Priscilla blue stone, as they call it. Although really doesn't look blue when you're looking at it. It has subtle tones that you can say, yeah, there's some blue in it, but the mountain range it comes from is locally referred to as the Puselli Blue Mountains. Uh, so hence they call it blue stone. Must be because in the distance it looks blue, but you're right. The, That's the, possible, yeah. The Puselli Blue Stones, they look, you know what they kind of remind me of is um, granite or, uh, oh, what's that other? Stone there, they're they've got a lot of like a green and grayish tint to them, almost like um, the unkite, but without the pink. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, uh, I always think the same about uh, Priscilla stone that it looks like their version of our granite. They yeah. have a different combinations of minerals, and they refer to it as dolerite oh. as opposed to granite. Okay. But uh, it's again, it's just because of these specific mineral combinations and how it was formed. Nice. And since that's a material used for Stonehenge, even though the pieces we have are not from that actual mine, they are from that mountain range, yeah. uh, because there is no collecting in the ancient site area at all. That's and right. Of course none, and there's none to be collected at Stonehenge directly as being a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So people need to keep that in mind. Don't go over there with your picks and Try to dig stuff up because it exactly. isn't going to happen. Exactly, but in theory, people could make their own mini stone hedge if they wanted to contact you to get some of these stones for themselves. They could get tumble stones and make little versions of it of, like that. They could, and again, we have the one style of the larger palm stones, which are uh, about two inches by two and a half, two and three quarter inches, something like that, which yep. are a nice. Yep. A nice stone, very beautiful, and you can see the uh, the various patterns in them yeah. reflect yeah. the actual style. And of course, in Stonehenge, the Stonehenge consi consists of several circles. Only the inner circle of the horseshoe shape they refer to it as are, are made from the Priscilla stone. The outside ring is made from a very dense type of sandstone that was more local to the area where it was built. Hmm. Look at you knowing all your Stonehenge stuff. That's because I love it. I, I was hoping to get there this year, but it's not going to happen. Well, 2021. <laughs> We're working on it. Nice. So you had sent me um, some pictures of your hematite as well. Yes, that was a thrilling find. Somebody that I normally get fossils from had these pieces. And, and the fact that they are hematite crystal clusters from Arizona makes them, you know, a great find from my point of view. Typically we find botryoil, which means uh, the rounded edge, bubbly kind of shaped chunks of uh, hematite, which come from China primarily, sometimes Brazil and a few other places. Okay. Uh, but they don't, they don't have that defined crystal structure, especially this style, which is a blade crystal, which means it's, it's uh, thick on the, the height and the width of it and the depth of it though is very thin. Oh. Not a, so it's not a chunky crystal like some of the Brazilian ones are, That's but very, but a very beautiful piece. Yeah, they're very pretty. Some of them look almost like blue instead of that silver. They do because some of them have a natural iridescence to them, not oh. all of them, mm -hmm. and some of them have a slight magnetism to it also, which is not typically what you find uh, in hematite unless they. Uh, have induced it through uh, a super magnet or something like that, which can, so it can be faked. Oh, wow. Okay. I see. Nice. And this is, but that's, they're made in the USA. That's nice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and like I said, it was the only time I've ever had one more than what they refer to as a micro mount and a micro mount, a specimen that fits inside a one cubic inch box. And, even at that, the specimen does not have to be anywhere near that size to fit in it. But this is the first time, like I say, I've gotten ones more, especially more than two or three of them that have uh, 
been substantial and nice looking pieces at re what I consider reasonable prices. Yeah, you got quite a haul here. I can't even imagine what your suitcase must weigh on the way home. Yeah, I used to do that. And the last time I did it, um, I put a very special piece of uh, picture sandstone in it, had plywood around it, taped it, and put it in a in a oversized suitcase so nothing would happen to it. And it still came home broken. So I don't oh. carry anything home like that anymore. Oh. I ship it all. Wow. <laughs> so what would you say... Um... Do you, is hematite one of your more popular stones that people are looking for? It is. Uh, it rates right up there next to uh, the various rose quartz, amethyst, clear quartz, citrine as being in the top four or five stones. Okay. Uh, I think just because of the natural beauty of it, the cool or sometimes hotness of it, mm -hmm. uh, from where it conducts the local temperature and energy easily, and of course, the great grounding effect from it. Yeah, I typically, and, I use it for um, attracting abundance. I actually have one okay. in my shop uh, um, and I feed it with, I feed it with the little iron shavings. The, what are they okay. Um, lodestone. Iron filings? Yeah. A lot of little lodestones, yes, okay. Yep, <laughs> um, and it, it seems, you know, I will say it's, I, as long as I've had my own brick and mortar plate, I've had that, probably the only consistent grid, crystal grid that I've used. And, um, and it seems to work because I'm still in business. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. That's the proof of it. Right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right. So let's move on to the, what do I got here? The black tourmaline. These are lovely. Too. That, those were another great find. Uh, I, we got them from our gentleman who, who's a, uh, a French gentleman who mines in Madagascar. So okay. he's there six months of the year mining, and then he goes home to France, uh, and then comes over to, New, uh, to, to uh, the USA for his selling trip. And usually we buy his fancy cut quartz pieces, which is what we go to see him for. But this year he happened to have some exceptional quality black tourmaline yeah. Not common in big pieces, and when they do, they tend to get a little brittle, and they don't get prepared properly, which is tourmaline, although it's a very durable, and I say hard, it is brittle, yeah. and uh, it takes some care to actually polish them well, so we were able to get some nice palm stones out of it, a couple of spheres, wow. and, uh, then the, and then some small specimens. He didn't have any big specimens. I was a little disappointed in that, but they're, for the price, it's a great deal on those. And they, uh, what I would consider the best black tourmaline ones I've ever gotten. I see that right here on your card. It says our best quality ever. Yep. Not yeah. even uh, ever like in Massachusetts speak. It's ever with an actual no. This is some serious yep. quality stuff. And I've found some nice ones on my own in Maine and some places. And I've bought a few nice pieces elsewhere, but none of them have compared to this. Wow. So tell us a little bit more about what, what people go for. I recommend black tourmaline a lot to people who are struggling with um, their empathic abilities because I find it just kind of helps you to stay focused in the moment and it really allow you to um, pick up a lot of other people's energy. Correct. Yes. I, I, I kind of use the same expression, but I come from a little bit different angle on it. Mm -hmm. I refer to it as dispelling or not allowing negativity to collect. Oh. And, in, and in my thought of that term, that opens you up to receive the other things or appreciate the other things and continue not being bogged down with the other, as again, negativity. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand with what you're saying. Nice. And again, I, I, I appreciate it as a very beautiful stone on top of it. It definitely Although, is. These are, these are lovely pieces. And um, yeah. I, I have a few pieces that I've gotten from you over the years that I love also. If yeah. anyone wants to see them, they have to come visit me. <laughs> yep, I will, I will be doing that. I've it's nice. been on my radar. Unfortunately, my radar has been cluttered. <laughs> Sounds like you need some black tourmaline there, Brad. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I guess, yeah, I gotta put it in the car then, though, because that's what it needs the most. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, so our 
Our next slide is a lovely photograph of Diamonds and Dinosaurs business card. And so this is your uh, your tourmaline mix, and I see you've got- That is, yes. Yeah, some, some again, this year seemed to be the year for tourmaline, primarily black, but I did get a few small pockets, of, uh, packets of uh, colored stones, uh, which often are exceptionally pricey, but we got them at a better price than I consider usual. And we also got some more specimen grade crystals, which are raw crystals, which uh, go from white tourmaline color, which is not, which is basically the same elemental part for tourmaline, but it has no element uh, such as lithium or um, iron or anything else that would have made the colors change to a different style. Gotcha, yeah. So, and then some of them have both colors in it, I, which are more like bicolors or watermelons in some yeah. cases where they, they're not, they started to form as crystals, but they never got to complete the process in a uh, gem manner. It was more specimen grade, but it's great pieces for someone who wants a nice piece of, you know, you're not going to get a one inch piece of uh, watermelon tourmaline in gem quality without selling off a couple of the kids. Right. But you uh, you can get a nice specimen one. Ours run from uh, two to five dollars for the ones that we have, something like that. I didn't I didn't send a picture on it because the picture I had I used some other crystals on top of it, and I didn't want people to like those because I sold all the other crystals on top. <laughs> so, I didn't have it plain. So nice. Sometimes starts starts confusion and problems when people go, I want it, and they go, I can't, it's already sold, and why are you posting it? And I agree with them on that. <laughs> posting it because it looks pretty, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Don't, don't look at the stones on top, look at the background. <laughs> oh, well, this is lovely, I think. Okay, so, and then the last picture is me holding up two aura photos from a million years ago. When oh my God! 2013. <laughs> That's funny. That must have been one of the days you were on the other side of the room from us because you're still smiling. <laughs> I'm going back to the picture of you and Karen because it's just very yeah. lovely to see you. Uh, thank you. So, tell our tell our listeners slash watchers again how they can get a hold of you, Greg. Well, the best way is emailing us at diamonds and dinosaurs at msn.com. And that's and is spelled out. And the other way would be to double check us on our Facebook page, also diamonds and dinosaurs. But I'm tending to not post a lot of pictures there because the pictures often end up other places yep. with other people's names on it when you do that. So I try to uh, keep out of that. What we do is we prefer a, the email or an instant message from uh, Facebook so that we can communicate with each other without posting everything publicly. And uh, we can get an idea of what you're looking for and then transmit ideas and pricing and pictures and uh, see what we can do to work together. Nice. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today, Brad. And I want to let everybody know that um, obviously if they're watching this, and they found it, uh, but the Southeastern Mass Pagan Pride Day event is going to be on September 13th, live on um, our YouTube channel. Well, I, I say live, I'm doing air quotes, you can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I can hear it. Right, exactly. People are sending in um, videos and I'm taking the time to record uh, Zoom sessions with people so that I can get them up on the website. Because even though I am retired from the organization, I did say I would help out um, behind the scenes, especially with this pandemic, getting things, um, getting things going, because I'm pretty tech savvy, you know, being a powerful witch and all. <laughs> Thank you, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, well, again, everybody, this has been Brad from Diamonds and Dinosaurs. He's been a huge long-term supporter of Southeastern Mass Pagan Pride, and basically pretty much all of the New England Pagan Pride events and so many other events in the area. So if you're looking for uh, gemstones, crystals, um, jewelry, they've got some carved ivory pieces too, right? And uh, fossils as yes. well? We have fossils, everything you can think of. That's why I say if you email me with your wish list, 
my photographs will be there for you to look at. Nice, nice. Well, thank you for joining me today, Brad. I'm going to stop the recording.